Hi folks, we had somebody send in this part example and say, what the heck is going on with this 3D contour? Why is it cutting all this air? And it was a great excuse to do a deep dive on what is one of my favorite tool paths. I wanna both go over troubleshooting some really common bugs and some tricks and tips to get the most out of what this toolpath can do. So first thing I like to do when I'm troubleshooting somebody else's toolpath or my own toolpath from some time ago that I don't like is start over. 3D, contour, we'll do the same tool one. And for any of the 3D toolpaths, you shouldn't have to do anything more, just click okay. This does two things. Number one, it allows you to then see the incremental changes that you make to the toolpath. And if you make a bunch of changes, but accidentally hit the escape key, you lose that toolpath that you just started. So this is certainly not what we want if we're trying to surface in this feature here. First thing to adjust is the tool containment. So right now the tool is being contained on the center line of the silhouette of the part. So what that means is if we look straight down on our part, it's saying that the center of the tool cannot go beyond this outside radius, that means we aren't able to reach further than this toolpath shows. We can fix that by switching to tool outside boundary. And while we're at it, I'm gonna click on selection and choose that outside box to be more specific about what we want our boundary to be. If we click OK, now we've got something that starts to look much more like the surfacing toolpath that we want. First thing you might be asking though is why do we have a toolpath all the way down here when our feature really starts up here? And that's because this toolpath is being programmed with a ball nose end mill. And so for a ball nose end mill, the blue line represents the control point of our toolpath, which is the very tip of the ball of our cutter. So when we're at about what looks like the bottom of our feature, based on where this blue line intersects just about the bottom of our curve, you can see that we're actually cutting right up here, almost near the top portion of the tool. And the reason the toolpath has to go so low is that's what it takes for that toolpath to contact with the bottom of our feature. For the sake of comparison, let's program this with a bullnose. The trick to do that quickly is right click, create derived operation, 3D contour, and all that I'll do is change over to a bullnose end mill that has an 80 thou radius, click OK. And this is otherwise an identical toolpath, but you can see it doesn't have to go quite as low. One of the other common things that we'll see, which really perplexes folks, frankly, for good reason, is why they're getting errant toolpaths that sometimes dip over the side of the part. We see that here with a single partial contour around the part. Sometimes you'll see them really dip far down and it's just simply perplexing. Here's why. When Fusion is calculating this cam behind the scenes, unfortunately, it can't use this really nice perfectly made solid model. It has to convert it to a series of triangles in a process called tessellation. And it does that pursuant to the tolerance over here on the passes tab. And in this example, I have a tolerance of two thousandths of an inch. You can hover over that and read this pop-up, which actually is quite helpful. Uh, and one of the reasons it's worth understanding this is that sometimes creating a higher tolerance value can really help improve the speed of your cam and toolpath generation because making it really small, let's say going from two thou to two tenths, creates sometimes an exponential number of triangles and it's just really taxing on your computer. The reason in this case that we get this extra errant toolpath is because we're only recreating this CAD model behind the scenes subject to this tolerance. So there's certain areas where your solid model is going to be as much as two thou smaller or two thou bigger. And in this case, it thinks it's a little bit bigger and that's why it thinks it needs to machine this area off. The simple fix for this is to program a negative additional offset that is equal to or really slightly more, I'll do one ten thousandth of an inch more than your tolerance right here. So tolerance of two thou, additional offset of negative 2.1 thou, click OK and that goes away. Or instead of hand coding that additional offset, click on those three dots, edit expression, delete that hand coded stuff, and instead type negative tolerance. And then we need to further subtract 0 0.0001. I think we have to type in inches because I believe those default to metric otherwise. And so now we get what looks like a hard coded value of the 2.1 thou, but if we actually go in and edit that expression, you can see it retained that formula. 
and even cooler if we adjust our offset to say five thousandths of an inch, the offset updated as well. There's another really important role that the tolerance factor plays in, and that has to do with the size of your G-code. This really matters if you have an older CNC machine, limited memory, or even if you have a newer machine like a newer Haas where you don't have high-speed machining, it can choke and starve your machine. A great way to better see this is to adjust our visibility by including the points, and you can see this smattering of black points around our toolpath. I'm gonna drive down the tolerance and what that's doing is it's making more triangles that are smaller so that we create a toolpath that more closely follows the shape of our part. Now notice that doesn't necessarily mean you're gonna have a better surface finish or even machine movement, but it does show here how many more black points that we get. And each one of those black points ends up becoming a line of G-code. You can see that by the fact that we now have a 194 kilobyte or almost, what is that, a fifth of a megabyte just for this one operation. Compare that create derived operation with one that has a two thou tolerance where it's about a quarter of that size with fewer black points. But we can even improve that further by using the smoothing setting. And what the smoothing setting will do is if it finds two points that are within this tolerance range, it can merge them into one. So we'll add a smoothing tolerance of two thou as well and we should further reduce that toolpath size and the number of points to the point where we're now about 10% of the code length. Okay, let's go back to that geometry tab. This is one of the most important tabs uh, in 3D Contour and in many of the toolpaths. All that we're doing right now to contain this toolpath is the selected chain, that's the circle we see in green, with the tool being allowed to go outside of that boundary, but then reduced back in by this 2.1 thou additional offset. One of the best features is contact point boundary. I'm gonna switch the containment back to tool center on boundary. It's kind of where we started this video off where the tool path is trimmed such that the center line of the tool doesn't extend beyond the machining boundary. But if we check contact point boundary, and you can read this pop-up, which gives actually a great explanation, it allows the tool path to be extended to machine basically what it needs to machine. Click OK and you get the toolpath really that we were looking for from the beginning. Contact only limits the toolpath to where the tool is touching the part. Here we want it checked, it was by default, but if we uncheck it, you can see we're gonna get a toolpath that looks like the original toolpath uh, that was sent in where you're machining a bunch of air. Not what we want here. It can be nice to have it disabled in situations where you want a single toolpath to flow over a part and not start and stop over say a hole. Throughout most of this video, I'm making one change, clicking OK, and able to see that comparison. It's a great way to interrogate a toolpath to figure out what some of these settings do. When you're doing that, make sure to leave this tolerance relatively high. Sometimes I'll go as high as say five or 10 thou, higher than values I might machine a part at, but there's no reason to sit around and wait for the toolpath to generate when all you're trying to do is see what does this box do? Slope is a great way to contain a toolpath. We don't really need it for this part because it's quite easy to select our geometry, but Let's say you did want to change from 10 to 30 degrees, and you'll see you're only going to get a toolpath that covers the area of slope that's between 10 and 30 degrees. It's a great segue to say, well, why do we only have one line here? And that's because over in the passes tab, we have a maximum step down of 0.04 inches. Contour is a toolpath that's much better at handling steep walls. We do a quick simulation just to see what this toolpath looks like. You'll notice that we're starting from the top of our part and working our way down. If you're new to machining, this might seem fine, but it's actually not the best way to cut because we're starting off by cutting with the very tip of our tool where you don't have as much clearance in the cutting flute and you don't have nearly as much surface speed as you do out here at the edge of our tool. We're much better off to start at the bottom where we're constantly presenting the outermost section of the tool to the uncut material as we work our way up. Luckily, Contour makes that easy with a setting in the Passes tab, Order, Bottom, Up. Your toolpath will otherwise totally look the same, except you can see it starts with the red down arrow, going all the way to the bottom, and then exiting here at the top. Now, let's tackle machine shallow areas. Before we check that box, I'm gonna adjust the maximum step down to 20 thousandths of an inch. So I wanna give a visual of this toolpath so we can see the areas where Fusion is handling it as the 3D contour and where it's handling it as the 3D contour that it treats as shallow areas. But even with this toolpath, you can start to take a look at it as we're stepping up from the bottommost layer to the next layer 
and so forth, that the scalloping between each layer is relatively small. But as this part flattens out, it gets significantly more. You can see the white area around the part that's uncut, and that increases significantly as the part shallows out. And you see that in the simulation as well. I've switched my stock mode to the comparison option, move the accuracy slider to the most accurate. And the other important thing is turn off the light bulb on your model visibility on the top left of your screen. That way we're not having the CAD model kind of backstop or fill in our simulation stock. It's not perfect, but it gives you a decent idea is a relatively smooth toolpath that represents what our part should look like until you start getting to the shallow areas and you can really start to see the dishing or scalloping of that toolpath. So that's where making some adjustments to the toolpath by checking machine shallow areas should really help us out. And for the sake of creating extreme difference, I'm gonna say a two thou machine shallow step down and we'll click okay. And if we zoom out, we don't really see much yet. So let's adjust the other setting, which is maximum shallow step over to 10 thousandths of an inch. That's the maximum amount of distance in the part geometry that can occur until Fusion will add another Z level toolpath. What we should get here is a pretty distinct change. And if we zoom out just a little bit, you can start to see this section right here is kind of our normal 3D contour. And then as soon as we hit this layer right here, you see how it's treating that toolpath differently. And it's gonna minimize that scalping as we move up at the expense, of course, of adding extra cycle time. Hopping back into the geometry tab, I'll often see folks try to use avoid touch surfaces to say, touch this surface or select this surface and leave that unchecked so it doesn't touch that surface. There can be times where that sort of thing is necessary, but the better way to get the toolpath in the area you want is the settings we've already discussed with the machining boundary, the additional offset and contact point boundary. You can of course also always use the heights to control your toolpath, although be careful. Sometimes if you move the bottom height up to say here, it will trim your toolpath higher than you want, unbeknownst to you or the next person that's looking at this part, and you won't realize why you're getting a bulge at the bottom of your part. Well, it's because the bottom height was set here and that ball nose end mill just can't get low enough to cut some of the geometry it needs to down here. That's all we've got folks for 3D Contour. It's a great toolpath and if you learn it, Scallop and Parallel, the three of those toolpaths alone will cover the majority of parts uh, in terms of how you need to surface them or 3D machine them. As always folks though, hope you learned something. Take care, see you soon.